So now I'll introduce the concept of state estimation uh, using the particle filters package and quick pump DPs. So if we want to estimate the state of an agent defined by the POMDP, we can use a thing called a particle filter. And what this does is it represents the belief state as a collection of individual mini states here that we see as particles. And so we call each state in this approximated belief um, particle. Now this is useful in problems with large discrete state spaces or continuous problems like we'll see here that are not well suited for approximated, or rather not well approximated by linear uh, Gaussian dynamics, and in the plot you see our true, obser or rather our, our observation of where we think the true state is, and then some distribution of particles that are around it that define, you know, kind of our belief of where we think the agent is. And so first we'll define this random walking agent, uh, POMDP, and then we'll use particle filters to update our, you know, belief of where we think the state is. So now I'll talk about the code that we use to define this POMDP. Um, what we first do is, you know, in, what's nice is in 22 lines of code, we can fully define all of the dynamics of this POMDP, which is just a random agent walking around a 2D environment, uh, including the render function here using plots.jl. And specifically in this case, we're using a generative model, which means we don't explicitly define the state and observation spaces, which you can see, you know, states and observations aren't explicitly input here but instead we provide some way to generate the next state and observation given our current state in action uh, and I'll talk about the details here in a minute and so what we can do is you know our initial state is some random xy that sample uniformly between negative 15 and 15 uh, our action space uh, is a dx or dy it's a change in our xy positioning. This is how the, you know, the agent moves around. Um, this is sampled uniformly from negative one and one, and it's applied as a state change or change of state. Our observations, uh, these are distributed according to a, a multivariate Gaussian or a normal distribution. Uh, and it means with the means as the previous state that we saw uh, and a variance of one. And our initial observation is just deterministically zero, zero. We'll, we'll just make that easy. And so we use a generative model that takes in the states and actions and it'll apply that action, which is some change from dx to, or dy to the particular state, uh, plus some random noise here, uh, and it will clamp it to the boundaries that we define, which is negative 15 and 15 to keep it within a box. And it's same for the y. And then we call that our next state s prime. We sample a new action from our observation space that we just defined here and we return that from the gen function. And then we have some render code that uses plots.jl uh, to actually display that I showed above. So now how do we update our belief and how do we use particle filters as a means of updating that belief? So um, using the particle filters package, uh, we also uh, import the history recorder from POMDP simulators and the random policy from POMDP policies because we don't actually care about uh, really the actions that we're taking. We're just going to employ some random policy. So we set up a simulator to record uh, a maximum history of 200 steps. We'll define how to update our belief um, using the particle filter called, uh, rather the updater called bootstrap filter, um, given our problem and how many particles we want in, um, uh, in this representation of our belief. And then we employ the random policy, as I mentioned, and the we call simulate, which takes this function signature, which includes our simulator, which is the recorder, our problem, the policy, uh, and some updater, which we'll define as the particle filter itself. Now we can run our recorder and produce some history. And what this does is this gives us a, a way to step through the history of the agent randomly walking around and us updating our beliefs using these particles. And note, our first step, the particles are distributed um, uniformly across this, this box uh, because we don't have any information. We have yet to get an observation. But right as we step once and we get an observation um, that we see in red, the particles start to kind of converge towards the true observation. And as we step this, further in time, we see that, you know, this kind of cloud of particles 
is distributed nicely over the observation. And what this is, is this is given this kind of, given the dynamics of the system that we described and some observation, these particles represent the distribution of where we believe the state is. Uh, and we can keep playing this around and see it just kind of randomly move uh, throughout this 2D space as our uh, beliefs are updated. So this is really nice. Uh, and then lastly, we can actually just create a GIF of this thing and save it off um, just to make kind of some nice animations uh, of the full history itself. We can call make GIF given that history and save it off to some file and show it here. And I encourage you to read the resources as well if you're interested um, in particle filtering further and you know belief state updates uh, and also the the original uh, particle filter that's used here this is the original um, reference and so next we'll talk about uh, how to approximate continuous spaces uh, to uh, solve it using um, approximate methods